In this video, we're going to be doing a general overview of virtualization. This will be good for those who have not used any type of virtualization software before, and for those who just need a little refresher. So the first thing I want to talk about is the traditional model. And as you can see on the screen here, the traditional model is basically what we've all been used to when it comes to computers. You purchase a desktop or laptop, and you have CPU and memory, hard disk, networking, and all of that hardware is inextricably tied to the machine. However, the virtual model adds a layer of abstraction, typically called the hypervisor, that sits on top of that physical hardware of the machine and allows you to create several different virtual machines from that by segmenting off those resources. So let's talk a little bit more about that abstraction layer or the hypervisor. There are two different main types of hypervisor. There's type one, and this hypervisor is gonna sit directly on top of the host hardware, and then you're gonna be able to provision virtual machine guests from that. And the type two is going to sit on top of the operating system of the host machine. And then the hypervisor is installed as more of like an application. And then you're able to provision VM guests from that. Now, of course, type one, also known as bare metal, you're going to get better performance because you don't have that operating system layer. But the type two hypervisors have actually come a long way and are getting really close to bare metal performance. Some of you may have used a type two hypervisor before, such as VirtualBox. If you haven't, that's not a problem. We're going to walk through how to enable virtualization, and then set you up so you can actually go and play around with this if you'd like to. So next, let's ask the question of why virtualize? And I've provided a list of a few of the reasons you may want to. And for some, especially businesses, it's a good way to reduce the data center footprint where you can have large groupings of hardware and carve those out into individual virtual machines. And that helps you utilize your resources better. It's also a great way to do dev and test environments because you're able to quickly provision a machine and also use backups and snapshots in case the, something goes wrong with the environment, which also is going to help us with disaster recovery. It's also a great way to test out software upgrades as well as new operating systems. And ultimately, it's a great way to save money. So now let's talk about how you enable virtualization. First of all, it must be enabled in your system BIOS. And as you can imagine, this is going to change depending on what type of machine you have. For Intel CPUs, this is going to be their virtualization technology, or VTX. And for AMD, this is going to be AMD virtualization. And you may also see that titled as SVM. Enabling the BIOS is typically done under advanced settings. But again, you'll have to check up your particular machine to see exactly how to do that. Also, keep in mind that once you have virtualization enabled, that you disable any other virtualization software that's running on your machine. This could be Hyper-V for Windows and also Android emulators, just as a couple examples. Those can cause conflicts, so depending on which actual virtualization software you want to run, you're going to want to make sure you disable the other ones because they may cause you problems. Next, let's go ahead and look into how you can see a virtualization is already enabled on your machine. Now, if you're a Mac user, there's a couple of ways we can check and see if virtualization is enabled. The first is to use the assistctl-a, and you can grep for the CPU features. Or more specifically, you can grep for the VMX flag, which currently all Mac computers run Intel CPU, so you don't have to worry about the SVM flag. So by running this command, it's going to bring up the CPU features, and it's going to allow you to see if that VMX flag is enabled. Now, if you run the second command, it's just going to show you VMX, and you won't see the other flags. So that's a little bit easier way to pick it out, but it's up to you how you want to look through that. Now we'll move on to the Linux operating system to see how virtualization is enabled. First, we're going to grep for the SVM and VMX flag in the proc CPU info file. I've added the dash dash color flag so you can see it a little better. As you can see, you're gonna see that SVM flag for the AMD CPUs and it'll be VMX for Intel. And if you see these flags in the CPU info file, then you know that virtualization has been enabled in your BIOS. Secondly, you can use the lscpu command and this is going to give us additional information about our CPU. And as you can see, about halfway down, there's a section called virtualization. And you can see the AMD-V. So you know that virtualization is enabled there. And this will also show you the CPU flags. And we can see the SVM is enabled there. So lastly, let's talk about Windows. To check and see if virtualization is enabled, you can open up the Task Manager and then select the Performance tab. And then here in the bottom right, you can see that it'll have virtualization is enabled. So if you've enabled virtualization in your BIOS, then it's going to show up under that performance tab in Task Manager. 